tight game where they made they're a really good shooting team and they made some tough shots at thought Chris Jones for a four or five minute period. Um, he just broke the game open with, with terrific play. Um, another night where he doesn't have a turnover in the game. It's kind of unbelievable to play at this pace to press and to not have a turnover. It's, kind of, it's really a remarkable performance. Great, great performance by him. <laughs> so, Coach, what were you trying to accomplish in this game? Well, I, I wanted to work on a lot of zone and on 2-2-1 press for the first time. And our communication is so bad. And, and it's surprising because Luke on two occasions was bad. We, we just not a, uh, it, it was really good for us to work on that and to get exposed a little bit uh, by not talking enough. It's all verbal communication, whether we're in a trap, whether we're in a down, whether we're in um, go through to a man. So it was good tonight to get a chance to work on that finally. Rick Russ got off to such a great start. Talk, talk about his play. And... I just think he shot the ball well. And, uh, I think he's a remarkable basketball player. You know, they, you know, I always laugh because a lot of pro scouts come in and say to me that, you know, they like him because they have a big two guard and they can play Russ at the two. What, what baffles me with, with the scouts in the NBA, you have a basically a 16-second shot clock. So what can't Russ Smith do in 16 <laughs> seconds? I mean, it's not like they're running a lot of motion, back screens. He runs a pick and roll great. He shoots it terrific. He passes the ball terrific. That's why I don't understand it. You know, in college, you, you sometimes need a point guard. In the pros, it's a 16-second shot clock. So he's unguardable. And I, I don't get that whole thing because he, you know, he's a scorer because Louisville needs a scorer. So I, I think he's just a treasure. Uh, I'm really happy he stayed. It's great to have him. Uh, they tried like crazy to get him in foul trouble to get him out of the game and couldn't do it because he basically just didn't guard anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Which would you think of Luke's for being back such a short fine. time? You know, he's a... I think we're, we're going to just milk him a little bit. I think the only... Obviously, look, we gave up, we don't usually give up 14 three-point shots, but they were deep, they're a great shooting team. Uh, I think the area that we've got to really get better at is, is, is rebounding, and it has to come from everybody. Uh, now, we just have this quality, it, it, and you know, we all call it boom, but you know, we've seen it now for about 18, 18 games now, we see this quality that these guys have. It's an amazing quality. And it's always, sometimes it's a different player, it's multiple players, and tonight it was Chris Jones. And all of a sudden it's a five-point game, you look up and it's 30. And it's an amazing quality. I've been coaching a long time. I haven't seen too many teams like these guys. But we got to get better. Our communication skills have to get better. We have to rebound the ball better. But once again, um, five turnovers in a game. Wayne, again, very active. He hit those the three in a row there, kind of when you did go out on that run, but, but pretty active again. I think Wayne's playing good defense, good basketball. You know, he's playing really solid basketball. He does his job. Um, you know, I, I, thought, I thought the guys did, from an offensive standpoint tonight, I think they did a great job. They just got to get better communicating. They're not, they, they have a strong desire to play defense. They just, don't, they just don't communicate with each other well, and that's because they're all new to each other. Has Jones done anything special to be this effective uh, so, so quickly? Yeah, I think, he's, I think he's just physically so strong that you can't poke the ball away from him because he he's really a strong kid. I mean, he's, a, you know, he's smart. He knows when to take over. He knew we were in trouble. I've seen him do it at junior college. He's down 19 uh, one time out. I remember him yelling. At, uh, I was at the game. He said, we're Louisville. We're coming back. And he's yelling to obviously impress me. And they came back and he took over the game. And they won it prior to that. He was just getting movement. And he just has a, a couple, some unique abilities. So it's just them making the threes. You guys were defending it to your liking then? We, we just have some communication lapses. But I think we're going to be a good defensive team. We just have to just play together more. The more we play together, the more we do things changing up. Tonight I got a chance to change up, use a lot of players, and it was it was good to see. <clears throat> what about Shane's performance? I think he's, he'll be okay. I think he's still... Um, you know, like, like we've been running him and working him out every morning, but it's not really basketball related. 
Um, he'll be fine. Shane will be fine. It's, um, I knew I wasn't going to play him a whole lot tonight, but I wanted to get him just some, some basketball conditioning. 14 minutes was great. Next game, get a little bit more and work at it. I really am proud of him because what we had him do, probably very few of you could have done. And me. So, please don't ask me what it was. But, um, you know, it, it, it took a lot of discipline from an extremely undisciplined young man. For 30 straight days, he had to do this. It's not easy never to, to get yourself up at, at 6 o'clock, 5.45 sometimes in the morning. And um, he still has a long way to go with this, all this stuff. But he did a remarkable job for 30 straight days of constant, you know, never going out one day, not one day, 30 days. For Shane Bahannon, that is an impossibility. <laughs> no visitations, nothing. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good performance.